Judges chapter 6 verses um, 36 through 40. Gideon said to God, if you will save Israel by my hand as you have promised, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to place wool fleece on the threshing floor. If there's dew only on the fleece and not on the ground, then I know you'll save Israel by my hand as you say it. Verse 38, and that is what happened. Gideon rose early the next day. He squeezed the fleece and wrung out the dew, a bowl full of water. Then Gideon said to God, don't be angry with me. Let me just put in one last request. This time make the fleece dry and the ground covered with dew. That night the Lord did so. Only the fleece was dry. All the ground was covered with dew. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to preach um, this afternoon using as a subject reversal of fortune. Reversal of fortune. Since the inscription of Adam Smith's economic classic polemic entitled The Wealth of Nations, most Americans have been adamant about obtaining two things, more and better. In the relentless pursuit of satisfying self, what has happened is we have obtained more but have failed to make things better. So seemingly, it would appear, this generation has opted to get more at the cost of getting something better. Wanting to live in the narrow parameters of wanting to get more has ended up making us make life worse. We wanted more money, so we worked more hours. And when we worked more hours, we bought more things. But at the end of the day, our family life, our children's academic achievement, as well as their attitudes toward self, not to mention our endless indebtedness, has become worse when it should be better. What a scathing indictment for African Americans that we've had more degrees than we've ever had in the history of our people. We have an accumulated wealth that would make us the 13th wealthiest nation in the world and we have nothing to show for it. We've never seen so many houses foreclosed so many cars repossessed and so many jobs downsized and by and large because many still don't know what would make them happy only to discover excess does not equate to success jesus my dear friends came that we might have life and have it more abundantly it was the work of the diabolical scheme plot of the enemy that tried to make us choose between more and better, leading us into a dark alley like a blind man looking for a black cat. So we're left with less feeling worse. It is my feeling that things are about to change. That God is, in fact, releasing into the atmosphere, to this environment, and to this congregation. That you have to begin to expect the opposite. Whatever it is that you have now, expect the opposite. When we find ourselves careening into the book of Judges, chapter 6. Note in the backdrop of the text in verses 1 through 4. The Midianites are terrorizing the children of God. And everything that they've worked for, everything they've sacrificed to get, everything they've labored to achieve, 
the enemy just keeps coming in and snatching it. Have you ever come to a place in your life that every time you try to make two steps forward in progress, something will push you three steps backwards? Isn't it strange that when you finally saved up for a rainy day, a tsunami comes and bills will deplete you of everything you thought you had fortified. Life has a strange boomerang that you can intentionally be nice to people only in return for people to be nasty to you. And when you work hard to get something, sacrifice to get it, labor in order to get the rewards of life and then to have somebody indiscriminately take it from you can be frustrating. Verse number 7 of the text in Judges chapter 6 says, They cried out unto God, Lord, change it. Their cry was a simple cry. It was a plaintive plea. Lord, I want to stop losing what I've been working for. And every now and again, there's a small conglomerate within the congregation who's not shouting to get new stuff. They want to just be able to hold on to what they already have. And every time it is that it looks like your plant is about to bloom, the flower is about to blossom, the harvest is about to be yielded, the enemy comes down to cut you off at the knees. And you'll cry in anguish as you sit in that chair. Is Lord, if you could do anything, help me to stop losing. It is my gauge, it's my aim, it's my hope that things will turn around and I can start winning again. For far too many of you, you have limited the argument and the conversation to that which is tangible. But I'm talking to somebody in the room who's losing patience. Because you've been trying to hold on, but nothing is happening. I'm talking to somebody who is in a frail and a very fragile situation, and you're losing confidence in other people. Because every time you try to believe, they keep letting you down again. I'm talking to somebody who's come to the place where you're now losing the last ounce of love you have left. Because every time you commit yourself to be vulnerable and open, you only find yourself in in a collision with somebody who didn't know how to handle your trust. Lord, if you can do anything, stop me from losing. And the Lord heard their cry. And he says, I'm getting ready to put my fingers in the dike. I'm getting ready to stop you from losing everything. The Lord says, Gideon, I'm with you when you look like you're scared. Isn't it interesting that God has more faith in us than we seemingly have in him? So every time it is that we're getting ready to wave the white flag of surrender... God refused to let us retreat and keep pushing us so that we might advance. It's amazing how God sees the best in us when we are at our worst. It's amazing when it is that God cheers for us when we want to sit on the sidelines. Here's a man by the name of Gideon. He hears the enemy coming and what does he do? He cowers down in the threshing floor hiding when he's a man of God. And God comes to him through an angel and says, get up, man of carriage. It's oxymoronic in nature that he is calling him the opposite of how he's acting. The thing that you have to love about God is that God sees us for what we're supposed to be. Not for how it is that we are right now. When when God gets through working on me, I I shall come forth as as pure gold. There, there's somebody in the room who needs to understand God doesn't see you how other people see you. 
He sees you because of your potential. He sees you because of your promise. He sees you because of your gift. It's only small minded people who see you because of your problems and see you because of your failures and see you because of your mistake. But you got to shake the dust off and say I'm greater than my greatest mistake because greater is he that's in me. The Lord says to him, get up. You are a man of courage and I'm going to help you stop losing. The Lord is with you. And hear Gideon's response in verse number 13. Because Gideon echoes the sentiments of our silence. He says, if the Lord is with me, why is this happening to me? I, I wish you would stop being superficial, shallow, and churchy. But, but have you ever had a moment in the midst of your pain, your storm, and your frustration when, when church folk just want to throw scripture at you and, and talk about being blessed and highly favored and God is good all the time? Have, have you ever had a moment where you had to second guess the favor of God that was on your life and said, if God, if you're really with me, why are you letting me struggle? God, if, if you're really with me, why am I still by myself? If, if, if you're with me, why am I in a job that's not commensurate to my gift? If you're with me, how in the world did you leave me in a dysfunctional family? And God says, um, you, you, you want to see whether I'm with you while you're losing? Brace yourself for a miracle. Hallelujah. I, I, I don't know where you are, but I, I want you to know that God is looking for an opportunity to show you that while you lost some material stuff, you didn't lose your favor with him. And I don't know about you, but I, I'd rather have the favor of God than have an expensive car and, and to have jewelry and to have a nice house. Because if I got his favor, I, I can lose all the material stuff, but I still got my joy. And based off of how you responded, I can tell you still are caught up on what you can buy and what you can get. But as the old saints used to say, just keep on living. You, you'll get to a place where you're no longer impressed by stuff and you understand I don't need style. I need something substantive that can hold me when the things go out. And he says, I'm, I'm getting ready to show you a miracle. And the miracle I'm getting ready to show you is that things for you are about to turn around. I don't know where you are in this room. I'm not talking to your neighbor, but I'm preaching to those of you who've been having questions about where God is in your life. How God had you to come to this 1130 worship service just so you can hear the clarion announcement that everything in your life is about to turn around. I, I know it doesn't look like it. I know things look meager and it looks bleak and it's almost depressing and you're almost at the place of throwing your hands up and quitting but God said hold on a little while longer because in a few short days everything in your life is about to make a 360 degree turn around you didn't come to church for nothing God wanted to see if you had faith even while you were losing stuff And Gideon is a lot like us. He says, Lord, if you're with me, show me a sign. Show me is get ready to turn around. Show me I'm going to stop losing. Show me that you're going to give it all back to me. Show me that I'm going to recoup my losses. He said, I need a sign. And Gideon said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put wool fleece on the floor. And, and God, if you God and you with me, make the fleece wet. 
but make the ground dry. You have to understand, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that fleece is nothing more than lamb or sheep's hair. Uh, for those of you who grew up in the church, you remember uh, that we are the sheep. Oh my God. And, and he is the shepherd. And so there is some metaphorical symbolism that is being used uh, that I don't want you to miss out on. Is that the sheep, hear me, is supposed to be killed. But instead of being killed, here it is, it's just shaved. God is saying, you don't even understand what your miracle is. Is that when you started losing stuff, it wasn't your stuff the enemy was after. The enemy was after your life. But I told the enemy, he can have your stuff. But he can't mess with your soul. And there's somebody in the room ought to be thanking God. If that's what the devil wanted, take my car, take my money, but let me still have my spirit in the right place. The enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And and he thought this year he was going to wipe you out. Oh my God, but God says it was just a shaving. I I had to make you lose some stuff uh, so that you would understand it ain't about the stuff. Uh, Because the strange thing about hair is if you cut it, it'll grow back. And what the enemy didn't even understand is he thought he was going to knock me out my square uh, because of what he took from me. Uh, But God says, I'm getting ready to give it all back to you. In case you don't know, I'm still in the book of Judges. And what might make the point more pronounced is in the book of Judges, we find a man by the name of Samson. And Samson, watch this, the secret of his strength was his hair. And Delilah thought once she cut his hair that that would be the end of his anointing Uh, but what she didn't count on is that after he lost his hair he said to the Lord give me my strength back one more time and the text said his hair began to grow back I came to tell somebody there was somebody in your life who thought that they were going to cut off your strength Uh, they thought that they were going to clip your hands and thought they were going to break your self esteem but they didn't know that when you walked up in church today God said, because you've been faithful over a few things, I'm about to give you your strength back. God, give me my strength because I don't want to cry. Because I don't want to give them the satisfaction of knowing how bad they hurt me. Give me my strength back so I don't lose it in front of my child and I can keep myself together. Give me my strength back. Says, uh, Put the hair on the floor make the fleece wet but the ground dry Y'all, you, you, you don't even understand what God is getting ready to do for you he said make the fleece wet but the ground dry in other words Gideon was saying give me something my environment doesn't have oh my God I, I want to be different than everything around me. Oh my God. I, I, I ain't trying to be like nobody else. But God you made me uniquely. And distinctively different. From everybody sitting on my row. No wonder they don't like me. They can't understand me. Because there's something different about me. Put something different on my life. So that my perspective is different. Put something on my life that my vision is different. Put put something on my life that my expectation is different. And ladies and gentlemen, you ought to brace yourself. That your circle is about to change. The things that you desire are about to be changed. Because you are not like the rest of the people you grew up with. They keep trying to hold on to you because they see you evolving and developing opinion and changing and transforming but you can't go back to who you used to be the devil is a liar been there done that got the t-shirt if that's where I was going to be I would have died by now but because there is a call of God on my life I'm in the world but I'm not like the world put something different on me 
be seated, please. Put, put, put a different kind of anointing on me that makes me so different. You can't compare me to nobody else. God, help me in here. I'm, I mean, I, you, you can't replace me. You better hold on while you got the opportunity. Because it ain't till I'm gone you're going to realize what you had. Ain't nobody like me. Put something different. It says, make, make me different from everybody in my family. Oh my God. I, I mean, we don't got nothing in common. We, uh, we don't even look like we related. I'm, we, our conversations ain't even the same. It's hard to believe we grew up in the same house. He said, make me wet while they're dry. God, help me. In other words, put a fresh anointing on my life. I know this ain't for everybody, but those of you who want a different kind of anointing, I don't want to wait to come to church to feel his power, but thank Thursday afternoon when I'm on 695, I want to feel the Shekinah glory because there's something different. Oh my God. There's something different on my life and I'm, I'm trying to figure out why I don't fit in. I'm, I'm sitting at a table full of people and I'm asking people, I'm asking myself, why am I here? I ain't, I ain't even got nothing to talk with them about. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how they even think they can holler at me. It's, it's something different about who it is that I am. How in the world you think you can buy me? You can't afford my pinky toe. There is something different. Something is different. Something is different about me. Be seated, please. Hallelujah. Be seated for just one moment, please. I, hallelujah. I, I want to be different from my environment. I, I'm, I'm different from all the people I work with. I, I'm just different from them. I, I, they ain't got to invite me to lunch. I, I, I don't need to be a part of their little conversations. I'm just going to stay in my lane, do my thing. God, help me collect my check, go home. I'm different from a lot of the folk in my church. God, help me. They don't understand me. I don't feel like talking. I don't feel like being a part of no little circle, no little clique. I didn't come for that. I've been there. I'm not at a different place in God. There's something different about me. There's something something different about me. So I I, want to be wet while the ground is dry. Before before I go another step further, would you just tap three people and tell them there's something different about me? Yes. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's something different uh, about me. The 15 of y'all who's standing, be seated, uh, because I got to show you something. Be seated. Uh, Real quick, real quick. Uh, It says, Lord, make me different from everybody on my road. Make me different from everybody in my family. Make me different from everybody sitting in this section. Make me different than everybody who I grew up with. I'm at verse number 38. It's only five words. Here it is. And that is what happened. God, help me in here. You don't even understand. This is just for those of you who touch somebody. God said, because you wanted to be different, that's what's getting ready to happen for you. You will never be able to go back to being normal. You are not the status quo. You are not just a statistic. There is something on your life that the devil can't stand, but he can't do nothing about it because it's already on you. And that is what happened. While you were in church, he changed you. (laughs) While you were sitting in this sanctuary, he anointed you afresh. While you had your hands lifted, he broke into your secret place and started rearranging some stuff in your life so you're able to say things I used to do. I don't do anymore. See, folk don't understand because over the last six weeks you've been feeling different and you didn't even know it was a part of the purging process that God had to get rid of some stuff in order to make you a new creature in Christ Jesus. And that's 
would happen. Gideon says to God after it happens, Lord, I need you to do something for me. I don't mean to wear your patience. I didn't mean to bother you. I know this is a stretch. But God, do this. If you're going to give me the victory, here it is. Reverse it. He says, this time, make the fleece dry and make the ground wet. All right. He says, um, Lord, the miracle I need is for stuff to be placed in reverse. That everything, here it is, that's been headed towards me, reverse it. Oh my God, every assignment of the enemy that thought I had a bullseye target on my chest. God, I wish I had some worshipers. Reverse it. The cancerous growth that has been, in fact, manifesting and growing in my body. Lord, what I need for you to do is reverse it. Be seated. Because it's, it's, it's a subtle miracle. Uh, it's, it's, it's not dramatic. But it's meaningful. And about 800 of you are going to get it. The miracle I need. Um, is all I'm asking God to do for me. I ain't talking about you. The miracle I need God to do for me is to make things normal. God. Oh my God. I'm, uh, see, I, I told you you were going to miss it. Uh, see, a lot of us, uh, we, we don't have fantasy island dreams and, and Disney World expectations. All we want is something normal. We, we, we want a normal friendship that, that the people around us are not secretly jealous and, and hating and insecure. To just give me something normal. I, 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 give me a normal relationship that when, when they tell me something, I can believe it. I ain't got to check behind them. I ain't got to second guess it. Give me something normal. Give me an assignment that's normal for my life. And I, I feel like I'm losing you um, because nobody wants normalcy. Everybody wants the spectacular, but I'm, 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 this is only for those who dream of an existence with no drama. Oh my God. We're, with no arguments, with no confrontation, that I ain't got to be defensive all the time. I, I, I ain't got to jump every time the phone ring. I just want a life where people ain't in my business, they not in my face, where folk ain't accusing me of stuff I ain't even do. God, just give me a normal life. I need you to reverse the cycle that I've been living in so I can finally get to sleep at night, so I can finally stay focused on my assignment, so I can finally persevere on what my appointment is. Give me normalcy. And, and God told me to tell you for those of you who can receive it the turnaround that's getting ready to happen is God is getting ready to take you to the season of your life when it used to be normal. Oh my God y'all don't like that here. Uh, that, that you can pay bills actually on time. Uh, uh, Y'all don't like that. Where, where you ain't got to go check in the ATM every day to make sure you got something in there. That you, that you ain't got to pray before you go into work so you don't cuss nobody out. You, you don't lose it so that you're able to just stay focused on what your God-given assignment is. He says, I'm getting ready to reverse it. Take the wet that was on me. Here it is. Take it off me and put it on the ground. All right. Okay. 
says, uh, my first request was off. Because I wanted to be the only one. Change it. Whatever anointing you've placed on me. God, take it off me. And release it to the folk around me who don't know what the power of God feels like. Oh my God. See, some, some of y'all missed a miracle. You missed a miracle. Did you hear what I just said? I said the anointing that is on your life. They is getting ready to be a divine transfer. Because folk who were looking at you crazy when you shout and give God glory. That's because they didn't have the same power. But God, the power that rests in me. I want that same anointing on every person that lives in my house. All right. I'm getting ready to go there. Be seated, please. I, I only got one minute left. Would you look down your row and tell them you done sat next to the wrong one? Hallelujah. Would you be seated for just one moment? This is my last time asking you to be seated. Look down your row and say, you sat in the wrong section. Uh, because you obviously don't know how much anointing is on my life. But I am now releasing that the same power of God that he put on me when I was in my mother's womb is now running down my row that the sick shall be healed. Demons are going to be cast out. Broke people are going to get their needs met because of the anointing that's on my life.